If you think trains will stop if they see a car on the tracks, you're right, they will. About a mile after they hit you. In 2015 alone, 230 people were killed at railroad crossings. Don't become the next fatality. Stop. Trains can't. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Blog Talk Radio. And I am mortified. Joining me in the second chair tonight, because fuck the third chair, is my tag team partner in crime, Weezy McWeezer, turned himself straight out of the Ohio, Mr. Jesse Starcher. How you doing, sir? Hello! Hello, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what's going on? I do have the Weezy's, man. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, I tell you what. Uh, just, I'm, I'm just barely hanging on with some... Uh, you know, you, you get you get to walking upstairs and walking downstairs to go do some podcasts and take some breath out of you. I don't know what's going on around here. Jeez, tell you what, I'm now, ready to talk you, some metal though. Do you, now, do you got the projectile leprosy like I got, or or what's going on in your world? No, no, it ain't that bad. My goodness, it's all about <laughs> it's all about being allergic to dust. It's got to be because when you start moving stuff around. The dust just starts flying up in the air, and it doesn't hit. It doesn't hit me until like an hour or two later, and all of a sudden it's like, I don't know how many times I've sneezed in a row. I swear I've broken a record like ten times. So I'm, I'm not are kidding. You all, are you all moved in now? Or no, are you still, no, like, I'm in still in the old moved. house. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I'm in this. I, I'm emptying out this basement, and there is boxes piled up right by the door, just ready to go. So I'm kind of like Can slowly you? moving out. Can you just tell me when you break and fucking snap? I don't really know what the difference <laughs> is between break and snap. Um, I'm redundant and I'm repeating myself. Uh, can, you, can you let me know when you just fucking snap and start throwing your, your prized belongings, formally prized belongings, into the street, hoping they'll run over by several uh, cars? Oh, I'd like man. You know when you get to that I, point. Ten years. We have lived in this house ten years, and when I moved into this house – we had one child that was one and a half. Now I am three children deep with the oldest <laughs> being an 11 year old or 12 year old, excuse me. So, uh, it is, it's just, there's the amount and we've discussed this on an upcoming podcast at some point <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on the welcome upcoming to the Rattledge and flash. Welcome to the Rattledge and Flashpoint network. Where uh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> all over the place, all over the traveling. timeline. That's right, <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, there's just there's just way too much shit in this house, and to be moving it all, it's and then all of a sudden, like an, an, an atomic uh, or a mushroom cloud of dust just happens to appear, and I've got to work down here, dude. Stuff, and I think that's what's killing me. Yeah, you uh, you need to go out and breathe that nice blizzard air, clear your lungs out. 
Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. Freeze my snot sickles. About... Exactly. All right. This is not the Weather Channel podcast. We're here to talk some fucking metal. And tonight, the topic at hand is Darkest Hour, their ninth studio album, Godless Prophets in the Migrant Flora. Mm, flowers. Speaking of allergies. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, I really don't know a tremendous amount about this band. I actually think I, I when I saw that Darkest Hour was putting out a new album, I think I was thinking of like Dark Throne or something else. I, I, there's another another D band. Um, another D bag. But I, I remember <laughs> I threw them. <laughs> I looked at what was uh, what came out March 10th, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up real quick here. List of metal albums 2017. Um, and I thought of the albums that came out on March 10th for us to review this week, uh, this one made the most sense. Even even though I wasn't as familiar with Darkest Hour as maybe Cooper is, who is uh, still working, <laughs> presumably. Um, I mean, our choices were Black Map, no idea who they are. Celador, no idea who they are. Or Celador Breadsticks, I don't know who they are either. Um, <laughs> Run Device. <laughs> <laughs> Evocation, I've heard of them and just didn't want to do the album. Fen. Meh. Havoc. No. Um, now, Hydrogen I might have done, and then I might have been alone on this podcast. Um, because I, I like a girly hard rock band. Uh, Lock Up, Nick Douglas, and Planning for Burial. So, I, I know, just looking at all the albums that came out on the 10th to review for this week, I went, nah. Um we could have also done Cirrus Gorgor, because who doesn't no. want to do a band named after a Lord of the Rings reference? Um, oh, or Within the Ruins, or John Five's new project. But, you know, I said, no, you know, I, I ran it by Coop, you know, who, who has a vote. And we had all decided we were going to do Darkest Hour, even though, like I said, I don't know as much about the band. So um, I'm just curious. Do you have any clue what a Darkest Hour is? Or... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ninth studio album. Heard these people. Yeah. Ninth studio album, and this is the first time that I think I've heard of these guys. I even after you know getting into the album and listening to it a couple times, I was like, well, maybe I've heard them before. You know, just on one of those passing playlists or something. But I, honestly, nothing came to mind. So no, I am again, once again, brand new to these guys. They've, you know, th- being listed as metalcore or, um, according to the Wikipedia page, uh, melodic death metal and metalcore, they've actually been on a lot of, like, punk and hardcore labels. Uh, in 2000, they were on MIA, but, uh, and I don't know if you know anything, how much you know about record labels, but 2001, 2003, 2005, 2007, 2009, they were all on Victory. And uh, hmm. Victory is known for their punk, uh, punk rock, mostly punk rock and hardcore uh, outfits. Um, some, uh, some of the more famous ones are Thursday, Hawthorne Heights, Silverstein, Taking Back Sunday, okay. Bayside, Streetlight Manifesto, and A Day to Remember. Not exactly the heaviest of heavy bands. No, 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 it's so, not. Um, and then they were on, uh, you know, Sumerian records for, Those are the uh, <laughs> yes, for the 2014 <laughs> reason. Now they're on Southern Lord. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> they've been on a lot of, uh, you know, independent labels here, a lot of smaller labels. Um, but they haven't, they haven't really been on a label that I would have gotten like a lot. Like when I was getting a lot of free stuff from my friend who worked for, uh, worked for a record label, this wouldn't have been one of those bands I might probably would have come across because I, mm-hmm. you know, I would have gotten, cause I got stuff from like nuclear blast or, um, Roadrunner, that, that area of the metal sphere. Uh, yeah. so this is probably the first time I've really sat down and listened to darkest hour. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, just kind of getting into a new band and going into a cold like this. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. And thankfully this didn't turn out like some of the other experiences the past couple of years where, 
you know, I listen to something new, for, you know, the very first time because we're going to talk about it on the show. And I, and it's just like I have anxiety getting up to the show because I don't want to talk about the album. It's either <laughs> terrible or bored or um, I actually dug this. Just so just so before we start listening to some tracks, um, I kind of want to get your your thoughts going into it. Yeah, I, this was you know, again, like I said, brand new. Had no idea who these guys were, so popping it in and listening to it. Uh, you know, immediately I was like, okay, this is some heavy stuff. This is this is pretty darn heavy. Uh, and this is an album that really kind of, I, I want to say, I also can dig. Then uh, we'll get into a little bit of some of the criticisms as we go in, as we make our way towards the end of the tracks. But there are definitely some spots on this album where these guys shine and make me bang my head. So I, I think that... Uh, you know, I, I had my I had my concerns as well since I you know I never know what I'm going to get what you guys are going to throw at me either I'm going to get uh, you know the the lead singer of the Wraith band from Lord of the Rings or I'm going to get <laughs> you, know, you know something like Hatebreed or something that uh, and I always you know I love getting pleasantly surprised as well something that I could enjoy and these guys I didn't hate them so I, I look forward to talking about the album. Okay, quick sidebar. Uh, by the way, did I, did I not contain myself today? Did I not control myself? I was at work and I did not go crazy with the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> you did good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I get approval. I get just the approval. Yay. <laughs> um, though I did add a metal hammer of doom, uh, to the June calendar. I added Nickelback. Oh what my gosh. Pennyback. <laughs> oh my gosh! Absolute uh, shite. What? So yes, we're the new Nickelback. What is the name of that one again? Because I saw it show up. I can't remember. Um, oh goodness! Shit! I think I'd be I, able I got to put it. my Hang notes on. Hang on. I got it. I got it. Nickelback. I wouldn't give you a penny back. <laughs> uh, feed the machine. <laughs> feed the machine. And I think I actually heard the first. The track that they've released, which I think I believe it's called "Feed the Machine," but anyway, um, I don't recall sitting there going, "Oh gosh, Nickelback." Ugh. So I can't wait to hear the rest of the album. I can't believe you put it on the schedule. So I am going to have to listen to the album. But uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. The the Rattleson Broadcasting Network is slowly becoming my way of torturing people for my own no. amusement. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but seriously, folks, I also think we'll have a lot of fun listening to that and talking about it. And 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 really, what is a podcast but an opportunity to have fun with friends? But the That's whole right. point of this is before we talk about Nickelback, I wouldn't give you a penny back. We okay. <laughs> at some point, I'm gonna have to share again our sh- our surgical meth machine show. Let people get that <laughs> reference. <laughs> And that's where I'm going with this entire sidebar is you, my friend, need to cut that song up again and just get that sound for me so, before, oh, yes. June, before June 9th, before the Nickelback that, show. That can happen. I need, Not a problem. I need, I need Al Jorkinson just growling into a microphone, Nickelback, I wouldn't give you a penny back. <laughs> that's important. <laughs> It'll be after every track that we play. <laughs> Hit oh, the sound bite. the fuck out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna beat it to death. Beat it like a redhead stepchild, baby. All right. Wonderful. If you've tuned in to listen to us talk about Darkest Hour, you are I'm sure slowly getting impatient with us. So or quickly as the case may be. And I need to watch and I need to finish watching Zach and Miri make a porno for uh, on trial tomorrow. So let's get into this shit. All right. Godless Prophets and the Migrant Flora, ninth studio album by Darkest Hour, track one. This is Knife in the Safe Room. <laughs> Yeah. 
uh, we get right into it with that first track. No messing around. Got a good gallop. Got a good, got a good pit feel to it. Um, you know, it wasn't just straight punk slash, you know, hardcore. They, you know, I heard some melody in there after about the first minute. Uh, I thought it was a good, good strong start. I agree. Knife in the safe room. I mean, what an interesting title for a song. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, you you expect to be, you know, when I picture a safe room, you're in trouble. So you're either using a knife for defense or something else. I'm going through the lyrics as we go along. And I'll tell you right now, this band is probably one of the few bands that I enjoyed listening to and not having a real need to get into lyrically as to what they were saying. Uh, when I listened to this album, like I said, I listened to it probably about three times. I think this was, I think this might have been something that you usually do, and that's background music, where you know you can put it on and jam out and not be too concerned about what you're listening to and just get your get your shit done. Uh, so I remember when I first put this started the album, I was like, okay, well here we go, it's heavy as shit, and I just kind of let it go. Uh, I wasn't too concerned about what was going on, but I enjoyed the song. So heavy start for sure. Indeed. Indeed. All right. I don't want to fuck around too much tonight between, uh, yell sinuses and other stuff to do. <laughs> so we're just going to get right into this. This is track two. This is, this is the truth. singing there um and i feel like maybe this might not be the best example on the album of what i'm about to say but this is the beginning of where i started to pick it up uh this the style tends to drift into some kind of in flames feel uh, i don't yeah. know how familiar you are with the band okay you know what i'm talking about yes, uh, for I those do. of you who, for those of you who don't know you know the singer of in flames you know definitely a, uh, a bit screamy but more more of a higher pitch in the singing. Um, yeah, so I started to get a real In Flames feel with, uh, with some of the songs on this one, and it begins with this track. Yeah, dude, I, I'm right there with you. If, it, if you wasn't going to mention something about the vocals here, I was as well. Uh, this, I'm not the biggest fan of In Flames, uh, just specifically because of that type of vocalization. When you hit that higher pitch, ah, you know, screaming, I, I tend to kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to stay away from that. Uh, but he does a good balance in this song between, you know, he'll take it up to that higher register that he brings it back down to a, a, a lower bit of a, a growl, a, a growly type vocalization. So um, still heavy, still heavy as hell, which is a thumbs up in my book. But, uh, and I actually enjoyed this song quite a bit. 
What is it about the higher register? Uh, do, you, do you just find it grating? Um, do you? It's just an unpleasant sound to you. What is it about? A it's got to be. It's got to be something to do with the fact that. I mean, we all have our preferences, okay? You know, when you get, sure. uh, you know, when you get to, as I've said before, when you get the dire rates on, on a, trying to vocalize something and you just can't <laughs> understand what the hell they're saying, um, it, it, it's like, well, what the hell am I listening to here? This is not, this is not pleasing to me. And, I mean, who wants to hear somebody scream, you know? Not too many people. So I think I fall in that in that uh, in that little that that sect of people that are just like, okay, let me hear what you're saying. I'll, albeit though, I mean I've it seems like I really gravitate towards the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to growling. Um, there's I've I've mentioned them on here before, a band by the name of A Legion, and their their vocalization is complete growl usually it's it's well i shouldn't say that because there's some there's other bands that take it to a way farther level than a legion for sure but that to me seems extreme but i can understand what they're saying and but it's always usually kind of a you know that that monotone sort of growl but regardless as soon as you start getting into that higher register screaming i mean it almost sounds like you're in pain i i, I start wincing <laughs> myself you know i'm just like oh dude what's going on so yeah, it's probably a knee-jerk reaction, and I just the the good thing about this is, is that even when he hits that, we've got the band behind it that's playing some you know playing some great heavy stuff that I can enjoy. So I'm willing to forgive going up there and, and hitting those high notes or hitting the high screams or whatever with as long as you got something that's you know letting me bang my head. You know, when I was younger, I wasn't as as big a fan as the higher register in the vocals. I'm more accepting of it now, as a matter of fact. Um, And it it really depends on the total style, um, the the background musicianship going on, the tempo and everything else. But I, I would say that, like, when I was in high school, like a band like Overkill, where I just felt the singer sang too high. Oh, yeah. It, really, it bugged me, and I didn't like it. Now I'm much more accepting of it because of other reasons. I mean, we, we reviewed the last Overkill album, and I, and I gave it good marks, I think, from, from what I remember. Um, in, in this particular case, I actually find that it works well with, with, the, with the music, so it doesn't bother me as much. Uh, I have actually found myself drifting away from the more guttural, deeper growling because it, after a while it just sounds like a bear and with indigestion and that kind of drives me up the wall uh all right so let's go to track three here this is timeless number
move it over. Uh, you know, thank God for songs like this on an album, uh, like the one we're reviewing tonight. Because, you know, one, it sounds like they were having fun recording it, believe it or mm-hmm. not. Um, number two, it really, you know, we have a, we have a term here in the Metal Hammer of June. It's called Samesy. And it's right. tracks like this would stop an album potentially from becoming a little too Samesy. I like the start stop of this one. Uh, this one had a pretty good groove to it. it sounded like they were, like I said, like they were having fun with it. Uh, just all around, like a pretty good track. I agree. Um, I was looking through just kind of getting an idea. When we come up to this next song, uh, you know, is where I start to realize there might be a narrative in this album. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But as for Timeless Numbers, uh, you know, uh, you're right. It's It mixes it up. And you don't want to run into that. Uh, here we go again. Uh, this guy screaming again, and then we got the same stuff over and over and over. It's it's not that. So uh, I 100% agree. I'm glad I'm glad they put that in there, and and you know it keeps me keeps me hooked for more for the rest of the album. You know, um, I don't always have. To, it doesn't always have to be the most interesting or intricately laden musicianship uh, for me to enjoy it. it I just the band needs to sound like it's having fun. Um, the music needs to just be fun for me to enjoy an album. I mean, obviously I can appreciate good musicianship. Uh, and we certainly commented about that on this show, but not every, you know, as, as Les Claypool once said, they can't all be zingers. So <laughs> as long as, the, as long as they're having fun and the music is fun, I'm okay with it. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. allow it. I can tell you that I watched a couple videos they have. Of course, you know, any band out there that's worth their salt nowadays makes use of YouTube to go and, and, and support or you know, promote their album. Uh, and also they put out a lot of great stuff for what the production of some albums are. Now, Darkest Hour is no different. They had, uh, I think, I, I know of at least five parts of a, a web episode that they had on YouTube that was about five minutes long a piece. And I watched the first two. I wanted to watch the rest of them. I wasn't able to get to it. One thing that I did notice, I mean, it feels like these guys, there's no, I don't want to say there's an agenda because there's, it doesn't feel like there, it doesn't feel like they're one. And I hate to, I hate to say something like that and actually, there actually be an agenda behind this album, but it, they seemed to present themselves as very laid back and just be like, Hey, we're, we're putting out some, we're putting out some music and it's not like they had something something big to say it's like they talked about how when they put this album together you know they didn't when they went into the studio not nothing they didn't go in there with anything really they didn't have anything already set and ready to go as they sat down they came up with this album now a lot of a lot of bands members will have a, a riff okay i've got three riffs i'm bringing it in we're going to use this that didn't sound like any of that happened uh so when you have that kind of setting and, and that kind of environment, you're probably going to get songs like this where you have a good time and, and you know, it's, it's something fun to listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll talk about this after the next track, but you know, let, let's, let's, let's hit upon how some of these bands out there, like they go into a recording and it just becomes very serious business. And it, I feel like music shouldn't always be work. I know it is work and to be a professional is to put work into it. But it, I don't know, so, some of the bands, some of the, certainly some of the more successful, more popular bands, sometimes make their music sound a little too much like Johnny Punch Clock, if you pick up what I'm putting down. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to track four here. This is None of This is the Truth. <laughs> Lord, 
you think of that one? Oh, it's good stuff, man. I I find that as we go forward through the album, there's more songs that kind of hook me uh, that I that I really enjoyed. And we just you you paused it or you stopped it right. Why is uh, I was getting to one of my favorite parts of that song where you know we we kind of step back and let some uh, let some music fly. But anyway, good stuff uh, again. Like I said, I think this is a this is where I started to think that there may be a narrative involved or some type of, you know, concept in this album. You'll see that track two was, this is the truth. And then we get to track four and it's none of this is the truth. And I'm like, well, okay, certainly these two have got to be related somehow. Uh, and sure enough, the one, a little bit of research here, it, it does say I'm, I'm on uh, metal sucks.net says founding guitarist, Mike Schliebum has said that al- that the album does have a storyline, and vocalist John Henry's lyrics are certainly open to imp- interpretation. Taken at their most literal, they seem to be relating a narrative about some sort of, get this, you've never heard this in metal before, sci-fi apocalypse. Uh, but uh, he says it's also hard not to view that the storyline is a reflection of our cu- current tumultuous times. Um, what I, what, I mean, of course, that's going to be a... A usual topic in in metal, but uh, regardless, uh, again, I didn't really pay attention to the to the lyrics. But when you see song titles like that, that related to a song just before the last one, you start wondering. So I'm, I, this might be something I might have to dig further into as I listen to the album more and more throughout the year. All right, so I have uh, breaking news. Oh no. Breaking news here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. <clears throat> this is coming to us from uh, Blabbermouth.net. Danzig to release new album in May. 2017's Blackest of the Black Festival announced. The new Danzig album will be released in mid-May. This will be the first collection of all new Danzig material in seven years, following 2010's critically acclaimed Death Red Sabbath. Um, now... I went to, I wanted to see if, um, there, if there was anything on the Danzig page and I don't know (laughs) if what they've got coming out in May is the same as what it says here, but if that's true, here's what we have to look forward to according to the wiki. You ready? Okay. The next Danzig album 2017, that's the year we're in right now, Danzig Sings Elvis. <laughs> oh, it's all new material. God, God, I don't ask for much. Oh, <laughs> but Please, please, can we get an album called Danzig, Danzig Sings Elvis? Come on. Someone on Wiki is like <laughs> seriously messing with us. <laughs> Um, my only reason why I'm not running with this and immediately <laughs> fucking I uh, hang on, I I, I I plug Danzig sings Elvis into the into the Google machine here. Oh, please tell me. And there's a July 29th, 2016 article from PlumberMouth.net. Glenn Danzig completes work on Danzig sings Elvis, resumes recording next Danzig album. All right. Are I you? think what we have. <laughs> so I think what we have here is a Glenn Danzig solo album and then a Danzig band album, which are not the same thing. Two different things. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I I just want to let you know. I know we, you know you brought up the Danzig front here, but I'm I'm. I'm on southernlord.com and I want to read you some of the the featured bands here listed on Southern Lord. Have you ever heard of this label before? Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh I I'm going to just here we go. Uh I believe this is a this band's titled A Storm of Light and then we have Agra Agramonia, Agramonia. And then, I'm sorry, I, it's not like I can't I can't <laughs> that was unintentional. I, 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 it's not that I can't read these band names uh, because they're written out. It's more like they're in their fucking stick font that most metal bands use, and I can't hardly read it. Uh, but then we have – now, this this could be a mistake, but I swear, Ass Chapel, all right? 
That is seriously with the name of the band. Big and Big Brave Blast uh Gia Gryatros. Nope, not not I, I I seriously am messing that one up. Then we have Darkest Hour, Dead in the Dirt, Earth, and Goat Snake. Goat Snake. Not goat whore, goat snake. but goat snake. Dude, you don't even you don't even you don't even bite on Ass Chapel. Ass Chapel. So you know about anal Trump, right? <laughs> anal Trump? Yeah, I I I sent to the anal Trump stuff. Ah, uh, now jog my memory. I, I, I do not, I do not recall anal Trump. Around, around the time of the election, um, there was <laughs> around the time of the election, uh, the good folks over at Anal Cunt put out an oh. album called Anal Trump. Okay. And it was all like Trumpisms. Gotcha. I was obsessed with it for like five minutes. That is typical for me. <laughs> That's typical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I'm really, I'm really down on Ass Chapel. Here's, here's your bio for Ass Chapel. The band name that will not die. Something about fusing a church with an anus along with crushing wrists, double bass, and hellish screams burns the name into one psyche forever. <laughs> there's there's more to it, but Ass Chapel. Yep, that's a name that will I'll forever remember that name. I I know you want me to bite on this. I know you want me to help you turn this into a bit. I'm still no. looking for Dancing Sings Elvis. I'm done with Ass Chapel. I just I I, I am I mean hey. <laughs> oh, are you? Now? It's 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 out there. It's out there. I, I I won't speak of it anymore on the Metal Hammer of Doom until we review their latest album, like whenever it drops. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ass what? Chapel. Should I throw that on the uh, on the schedule as chapel? As ch- <laughs> to be determined. <laughs> ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, from straight out of Compton, as chapel. As chapel. Oh, uh huh. As chapel. What? What? You seen anything else there about dancing? About no. Uh, <laughs> I don't see anything about fucking All right. dancing. I'm gonna, but I, but over the next couple of days, I will be looking. And you can expect a change. I will be You can expect a change. (laughs) You can expect a change in the schedule. (laughs) But now you got me thinking about Ass Chapel. Here, let's go. Let's let let's do track five, and then I'm going to come back to Ass Chapel in just a moment. Here, this is not Ass Chapel. This is the flesh, the flowers of. Wait, the flesh, the flowers of. I was going to uh, no. well, I think you're right. I'm looking on Metal Archives. We have it's, uh let's see. It Metal said Archives they were done in 2006. 
Okay, well, we have we have some a, a demo apparently that dropped in 2015, and then a compilation, Total Destruction, 1996 to 2006, that released in 2016. So I know a compilation is just throwing all that together. So I don't know what <laughs> the demo that was released was titled. The name was Chapel of Ass. Uh, congratulations on course. that. <laughs> that's an original title what there. I don't know where. <laughs> but yeah, I think you're right. Uh, apparently, there isn't anything past 2003 listed on Metal Archives. So yeah, I think well, two, I want to say in 2006 they called this quits. Yeah, they probably moved on. I'm well. You know, looking at, I'd like to at least listen to a song or so from them. I might have to hop on YouTube. It looks like your typical. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I don't see. I'm looking at this 31 song compilation album that dropped, and it's 51 minutes long. <laughs> so, 31 songs in 51 minutes. Uh, not a song above two. Well, almost two minutes and 58 seconds is the longest song. Rest of them are less than two minutes and 30 seconds. So they're probably one of them. Uh, Maybe like an anal cunt band. Is the anal cunt known for like very short songs? Um, if by thirty seconds you mean short, yes. <laughs> well, these guys at some point triple that. So, but there is a forty-nine second <laughs> one called Sharp Pinch. Uh, let's see, we got uh, looking boy. for any. Yeah, like <laughs> the old page. Sharp Pinch from the Ass Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. oh no! We've learned some. Uh, see. That's why I love doing this podcast. Never would have known this existed. Ass Chapel's a thing. I imagine you could probably still buy their merch off of uh, whatever the they name of this Facebook album. Page. Do they really? Yeah. They probably they've been tor- they've been touring since 2006, trying to get an album together. Can't come up with anything better than what they had. Uh, <laughs> well, according to their about page, uh, they. Uh, about a chapel up your ass biography Tennessee thrash <laughs> all right Tennessee thrash um these are the people in the band the animal right. the gnome Deacon Dre Nygard Minister of Darkness and Eric Chapel uh gotta love those gotta love those they band have names a, they have a band camp page let's see what their band camp says uh Let's see here. Copy paste. They, they, <laughs> um, and funk, funk, thrash, metal, ass, chapel, destruction, rock, Nashville. Um, okay, so according to their band camp, they have a demo here for sale that was released in 2015. Uh, you brought that up earlier. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's really all it says here. I, again, I get the the full ass chapel discography. <laughs> Total destruction, nineteen ninety nine to two thousand six. It's available. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know I do a lot of gimmicky stuff here on the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network. I'm just I, there's a small part of me that actually now wants to check this out and do it on the show. Oh, thirty one um, songs. Jeez. No way would we attempt of, to do thirty-one. If we're gonna if we're gonna I, parse out our favorites of Daredevil, I I, I highly suggest <laughs> we go through the thirty-one songs of Ass Chapel's Total Destruction and pick out our favorite four. I'll take hey, the Jesse, thirty-nine second your, one. <laughs> hey Jesse, what did you do on your podcast tonight? Ass Chapel. Um, mm. <laughs> at, the, at the turn of the twenty-first century, a chapel of ass arose from the buckle. I, uh, <laughs> from the buckle of shit known as the Bible Belt, Nashville, oh, Tennessee. Built upon the crushed dreams of many aspiring country singers off Music Row, some local Tennessee dudes accidentally formed the satanic thrash rock juggernaut Ass Chapel, only oh, to find it. themselves self-destructing into hell seven years later without a trace. Behold, the only remaining relic of their existence with these 31 wretched tracks of total destruction, 1999 through 2006, 
includes a 13-song Live Through Destruction DVD. Oh, wow. They chronicled Ooh. their... They chronicled the Ass Chapel, and there's a DVD for it. I bet you... Man. Well, hey, I, like I said, I'm probably going to have to listen, just because, you know, hey, Satanic Thrash Rock Juggernaut, and... <laughs> I mean, they're talking about country singers and uh yeah so so uh, all is right boring this summer oh and i know they got like volbeat and event sevenfold opening up for them but i think we need to get a petition going because that's ass how we chapel, handle things now ass chapel yeah. reunion i mean there's no reason it shouldn't be done really no reason Someone, it shouldn't be done we need a petition that says Ass Chapel needs to open up, needs to reunite, and then open up for Metallica in stadiums across the world. But on, now, on, <laughs> on your band camp, on the band camp page, it just it cracks me up. You got yourself over here, you know, you got your list of songs. On the right hand side, you can follow, you can check out their Facebook, or you can contact Ass Chapel. Contact <laughs> Ass Chapel. I, I feel like Ass Chapel need pen pals. I, I agree. I think they need about another three Facebook followers, at least uh, from the Metal Hammer of Doom. I, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go on Facebook right now. Ass <laughs> Chapel. I, I'm doing the same thing. They'll be like, "What the fuck? And, we got two people and like that's their page." The like. <laughs> there it is. Um, I, I'm gonna go as far. <laughs> hey, Chapel, when the gimmick up your goes ass. too far. I'm sharing this on my heavy metal group. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, everyone, talk about this. This is a great thing. Share in a group. <laughs> heavy Dude, metal. They're, they're featured <laughs> posts. They 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 posted at least a year ago. With their, they got a couple. Uh, uh, looks like a couple amplifiers there. Uh, it says the Butt Church Tour public announcement system was perfect for shit holes and house shows. When all else fails, kids. Bring your own. Ah, that was that was 2016, right. dude. I am now posting Ass Chapel in my heavy metal group with the line, "We are now obsessed with this band." Hashtag M H O D. Ass Chapel. Uh, <laughs> lost all Sending credibility. Everybody be like, "What the fuck is this guy?" Sending a message. <laughs> we admin did like, nothing but. <laughs> we did nothing but rap. talk about you guys. During our coverage of Darkest Hour, congrats. It's more coverage than you've had in years. There you go. <laughs> nothing but talk about you guys. Hang on. You guys during our review of Darkest Hour. Review of Darkest Hour. The name that will not die. And then, then they're getting a thumbs up for me. All right. I have now. <laughs> I have now we have liked. Ooh, I got approved. You got approved? Yay! Nice. My my ass chapel post in heavy metal got approved. <laughs> oh, you know everybody nobody nobody dislikes ass chapel. I mean, come God on. God damn it, you can't stop the ass chapel. <laughs> it's a force to be reckoned with. You know, it's like my father always says, you can't knock the hustle and you can't stop the ass chapel. Hey, how about we play another darkest hour track? Do it. <laughs> This is Those Who Survived the Ass Chapel. Let me give it up, control! 
that ran long because I found Ass Chapel on Spotify. <laughs> Is it there? I pulled up. Yes. Uh, I was going to say I pulled up their album, but it like had no time for the tracks. I was like, well, maybe this is one I can't play, but I, I didn't mess around with it. So is it actually, can you play the tracks on Spotify? I hope so. I just pulled up, you know what? I was so busy, like, nope, I was nope, so busy it works. posting. And... I've got them. <laughs> Yay. Hang on. Their number one track here is the Battle Axe. The Battle Axe. <laughs> now, are they okay, referring so. to an actual axe, or is it going to be? Oh, I got to see the lyrics <laughs> for that. I can see it totally being about a woman. This is a minute and thirty-eight. This is one of their, you know, epic long. Oh, no. yeah, they put they put a lot of thought into this one. <laughs> I'm I'm going through as we, as we discuss it. These guys are, <laughs> just checking out. I don't know out. how much you can pick up on the. I don't know how much you can pick up on the mic, but this is not bad so far. I'm looking to see if we got I'm, any. I'm sure the guys in Darkest Hour are really appreciative that we completely <laughs> decided to abandon their <laughs> album to talk about the Ass Chapel. Ass Chapel becomes like the hottest band on the label, and they ain't released shit <laughs> since 2006. <clears throat> A hundred and three, a hundred and three monthly listeners. Um, <laughs> not, uh, not not breaking the wall or two, breaking two too many today, barriers. And I'm pretty sure. Wait, we had two <laughs> listeners today. I'm pretty sure it's me and you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They they don't even have like at least not on. I'm looking on the phone here, but they don't even have like stats as to where they're listening at, which I'm sure has got to be. Oh no, I got uh, it. Tennessee. I got it. Five, they had five. Their number one place to listen is Brooklyn, and they had five. Brooklyn. Listeners. Brooklyn in the house, yo. Know. <laughs> and then five listeners. <laughs> and then Seattle, and then Nashville, then Portland, then Stockholm, Sweden. IKEA is from Sweden. Oh, I hey. like Meatballs. Yeah, Sweden. I haven't pulled that gimmick out in a while. Did, were you <sighs> listening to Sabotage earlier? You gimmick, you. I'm, I was, I was, I, was like, I had to play it for Caleb. I was like, check it out, you Caleb. Freestyle that shit? You want to freestyle no. your, 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 your flash no. fucking. No, 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 I, I need the whole band on here and I don't think we can get uh, Josh's wife to chime in. So, so Just, we're, well, we're she, you're out a lot. Well, she fucking abandoned ship though. And she went into, she's crafty for some odd reason. <laughs> hey, uh, she got the skills to pay the bills. She don't pop pills. Oh wait a second. Right. That's a, that's that's something different. This whole podcast has gone off the rails and into the ass chapel. Hey, by the way, that last song we listened to was damn good. Uh, it really that, was. I, I, I think that was one of my favorites off of the album. At least it's it's if it's not the top, uh, I think it's at least top three. Of, oh, you're talking about Doctor Tower. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I've, I've abandoned I've abandoned Ass Chapel for a second. <laughs> You, the podcast that we had on Darkest Hour, I'm going back to it, <laughs> that we're currently doing right now. now. I'm sorry. I thought we were only talking about Ash Chapel and Ash Chapel. This is the Ash uh, Chapel of Doom, everyone. Oh, um, oh man. I'm rebranding that doesn't sound the podcast. Good. Ash Chapel of Doom. <laughs> How about the Metal oh, Ash Chapel? The Metal Ass. The Metal, <laughs> metal Ass is, it kind of works, but uh, that's, that's Metal. The Metal Ass Chapel of Doom. Metal the Ass, ass chapel, chapel of Metal? <laughs> All right. Uh, so those who survived, yeah? Yeah, agreed. It's a good one. <laughs> okay. All right. I got I to gotta turn the Shake page the here. Shake the sillies. Shake the sillies out. We got, we got six Shake more songs to go. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, you got a, you got a great ass. Ooh, uh. All right. I got all my sillies out now. But I got a fresh collection of sillies coming up on the next wave, so let's get this done. Um, oh goodness! <laughs> and people thought, "Wow, this show, this show is going to go fast." They're really ripping through these. Nope, we <laughs> always find a distraction, dude. You find, the, it, the, you, when you find the road to Ass Chapel, you sure as shit don't pass it. You go right down no. that fucking road. <laughs> if you're traveling to parts unknown and you happen to pass an Ass Chapel, you go in and talk to the priest. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> 
That's right. Uh, <laughs> the attention deficit disorder of doom. Um, that fit. Track seven. <laughs> track seven. Another headless ruler of the used. <laughs> Okay, it's not as good as six, <clears throat> uh, but it's, it's six. <laughs> it's not as good as those who survive, but it's it's uh, it's it's passable. I want to Danzig. Hey, not, oh, go ahead, Danzig. Danzig needs a hug. This is anytime I think about Danzig, I think about a Sugar Ray song called Danzig Needs a Hug. Have you ever heard it? No. Ha ha, touch the sky, I won't come back till the day I die. Beautiful morning, the sun is shining, I got my life behind me. Stay all night if the price is right, I told you so, come to me. Ha ha, touch the sky, I won't come back till the day I die. Beautiful morning, the sun is shining, I got my life behind me. You can stay all night if the price is right, I told you so, come back to me. I feel like the next contestant. It's not quite as uh, impactful. <laughs> not quite as impactful. Is that the whole song? Hear it. That's okay. the whole song, yeah, it's a lot of repetition. And it was by who? Sugar Ray? Sugar Ray, yes. Oh, my goodness. But I, I often so, think of Danzig Needs a Hug. Oh. Last night, <laughs> I was watching Last Man on Earth. Uh, cheap plug for that show. Anybody who enjoys oh, a good God, comedy. You watch that? You uh, dude. Watch that shit? Well, let me tell you something. Okay? So. This guy gets in the plane. One of their one of their groups, or one 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 of their, one of their groups. One of their uh, one of the people in their in their group has been learning to fly. Okay, gets in a plane. They're like, okay, hey, why don't you get in? The, you've been learning this whole time. It's time. You're ready. Go out there. I found you a plane. And the guy gets in the plane, takes off, gets about a hundred yards, and then nose dives into the ground and dies. Okay, so they're having a funeral for the guy. And Sounds they, great. Uh, yeah, one of the one of the guys says, you know, he says I've been working on this song all night. I have been, you know, I, I've been staying up all night. This is a, sing this in tribute to our good friend. And sure enough, he goes in the lyrics for "Fly" by Sugar Ray. <laughs> I <laughs> just want to fly. <laughs> and he does it real somber <laughs> in the middle of the in the middle of the funeral. Ah, such good stuff. But that now. That's when you say Sugar Ray. That's of course the first thing I think of. I don't think I ever listened to any of that album. Well, and I, I assume what you're saying came off of probably a different album, or was it the same album that Fly came off of? No, I listened to the good Sugar Ray album, sir. Oh, the good. Oh, look at you, Sugar Ray snob. Yeah. Okay. All right. I am a Sugar Ray snob. How I did it. was this before or after they they blew up? Um. The album I'm referring to, I have to pull up the discography real, real, real quick. I believe it's called Lemonade and Brownies. Yeah. All right. You need to go. Lemonade and Brownies is just the only good album by Sugar Ray. Everything else okay. is, is fucking mainstream, white boy, hat wearing, white hat, <laughs> Gamecocks, fucking bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Gamecocks. <laughs> <laughs> just pull up. Pull up the album cover of Lemonade and Brownies by Sugar Ray, and then you'll know, and then you'll understand. Oh, my good golly. 
Yeah. Hello. I've never steered you wrong, sir. Hello, Dolly. Okay, so then Floyd hits a 97, and that's where things take a yeah. gigantic so you white pops. Yeah, it's where all you white people ruin music. <clears throat> Buddy, I was, 1997, my first year of college, Fly got played a lot in the dorm room. Uh, the chicks, like you would could, me, the chicks dug it. Me, it made me nearly drive my car off a fucking bridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did you uh, when did you come out of New York? When, when did you actually leave New York? Is that I'm, obviously I'm sure that was later after college, right? I originally went to California in 1998, okay. and I was there until 2000. Uh, in 2000, I moved to Massachusetts. In 2001, I moved back to New York, and there I stayed until I got my master's degree. I'm an educated motherfucker. Um, <laughs> it says that on the my, on the uh, on the certificate they gave you, doesn't it? Yeah, I uh, I got my degree from the university from Fordham University and be an educated motherfucker. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got my I got my master's degree in social work in 2004, and then I moved to Florida in uh, in January of 2005. Uh, okay, and all right. So 97. What were you? Were you? And we may have covered this. Were you into the uh, EDM scene, or not the EDM, but the uh, fuck uh, KMFDM? Help me out. Was that the stuff yeah. you were getting into in '97? Okay. Oh no, I got into KMFDM when I was in high school. Uh, so that'd be like '90. Whenever I, I would say like '91, '92, probably. Um, whenever fucking uh, angst came out. Whenever, you know, uh, around, I would say, like, I had a slow burn into ministry or into industrial in general with ministry and KMFDM. And I, rem- and I got into both of those bands when they put albums out around the time that they put, um, for ministry, it was A Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. And then for KMFDM, it was Angst. So that had to be the early 90s. I see. So 1997, uh, I'm still in college. And yeah, this bullshit fucking Floored came out. Um, <laughs> You're like, I, much. <laughs> it's all been a sham. Fuck you, fly. Sugar Ray. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, hmm. Horrible. <laughs> well, but, uh, but dude, I, I wish I wish you could. I, I I would have loved for 1997 Mark Radlich just to spend like a week with me at Ohio University. You would have probably looked for a gun to end your life because I it would, would have, have been out the fucking window. <laughs> Actually, Ford wasn't nearly as bad. I don't. I I wasn't listening to a lot of radio in 1997, so mm. it was. So I don't think it was nearly as bad. Or Sugar Ray was as like. In your, all in your face about it until 1999, 1459 came out, and they were really big. Oh, yeah. And that album was fucking – oh, my God, I'm now having PTSD from this um, every morning. <laughs> oh, Let me tell you another so horrible good. memory. I have to, I, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm now remembering like every – like I was teaching at the time in California, if you can believe that. Um, yes, before I became a social worker, I, uh, I actually taught for six months in the L.A. Unified School District in the Barrio. Uh, I taught in the elementary – no, I taught in the junior high that actually fed into the high school that was featured in the movie uh, Stand – not Stand By Me um, – Stand and Deliver. Oh. Everything I've done in my life relates back to something in entertainment, by the way. Uh, <laughs> in any case, but I remember driving down the five uh, – the Interstate 5 in, in, in Los Angeles – and it was like that song every morning fucking followed me everywhere. And it's the worst. Ugh. I mean, that is the soundtrack to my hell. <laughs> every morning I'm a dinner, fucking dinner, but that's a fucking honky, sir. Oh, my God. Ugh. Oh, dude. Where's Robert Cooper? He needs to take the show over. I need to go sit in the fucking corner and fuck myself. <laughs> 
Must not remember. Must not remember. Must not remember. Every morning, every morning I sit in traffic and want to slit my own throat. All right. Um. <laughs> Cool. So, Darkest Hour, Godless Prophets of the Migrant Floor. Here we go. Track, track eight. What? That, that, whole, that whole bit started on me remembering the song Danzig Needs a Hug and ended with that. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Widowed. <laughs> I was going to say, dude, Inner Oblivion, I, I, it starts out like it feels like it's, okay, we're going to bring it down. And I guess it kind of morphs into this doom. It feels like kind of some doom metal. And then, of course, it picks up a little bit. Uh, another probably one of my favorites off the album. I, I really enjoyed this one. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to wind uh, wind down here. I've actually shortened the podcast, took a, took a little chunk off of this because we're going to end – Earlier than I thought we would tonight. Uh, apparently, Coop is still working. <laughs> <laughs> and one uh, can only boy. talk about Ash Chapel so much. No, we've we we have wasted a lot of time tonight. <laughs> All right, <laughs> this is track ten. This is the last of the monuments.
as we're starting to get towards the end of the album here, we're, we're ending on some pretty strong tracks. Yeah, I think it's at the end of this one. Well, obviously, we can't get to it because of, of legal reasons, but it you guys got to stick around. When you guys listen to this song right here, check out the ending. Uh, it's something else. I mean, they, they do a good job of, of again, not keeping it samesy and really putting out some great music, uh, some great riffs on, on this particular track. Just real quick, I, I know both of us, None, you know, we don't really have much, much of a history with this album or with these with this band. Uh, I hopped on to SputnikMusic.com and uh, our good friend over there by the name of Robert Lowe, he states, the first time the blistering opener knife in the safe room graced my ears, I did a double take. What is this balls to the wall riff heavy hardcore track that I'm hearing? John Henry sounded so lifeless on the last record. How could this vicious beast? On the mic, be the same guy. This couldn't possibly be post self titled Darkest Hour. I honestly triple checked to make sure I was listening to the right album. I think the pleasant confusion I felt is the best thing Godless Prophets has going for it. It has identity, something the band has been lacking for years. So, just to kind of give you a taste of what other people have uh, had in the past with Darkest Hour, I've seen a lot of high praise for this album online. Uh, that probably being one of the one of the best things I read actually to see that they've brought themselves out of you know I wouldn't say obscurity but you know they're a band trying to find an identity and find a strong album it's it's tough to do so it's good to see that people are recognizing this one as a standout from the rest that's come before yeah agreed I would have I would very much go along with that all right, this is track 11, In the Name of Us All. In the name! <laughs> kicks ass and i think <laughs> i need to add i think i need to add that one um i haven't been keeping up on my uh my playlist for the year but i think that one makes the playlist no oh, all right uh to me this one didn't stand out as much as the rest i don't know i don't know where me and you differ on that one i don't know if it's just because like it seems to drone on a little bit too long for me uh when it comes to his vocals and him just screaming at me thing over and over and over. I know you kind of dig that stuff every once in a while. Stop yelling at me! <laughs> Stop it! Uh, but yeah, it, I it, just I want think... to listen to music. Stop yelling! <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> He's, this is probably, in my opinion, one of the weaker songs off the album. But uh, again, there's, really? there's well, there's brighter spots. Uh, this uh, Most of this album, I, I don't, uh, when we get to this last track, I think this last track is the slowest if I remember right but every one of these tracks really kicks some ass when it comes to the speed and the you know the metal that they're putting out there uh so when I start looking at stuff I think I really I gravitate more toward the stuff that has a melody and the you know the guitars and the, the riffs 
that stick out to me. This one didn't feel like that at all. This felt more. I have. I want melody, not people <laughs> yelling at me. <laughs> I I have an appreciation for it, but you know when I got this dude screaming at me and you know we just got the same shit going on in the background over and over. I he's not screaming at you. He's he's screaming at me. In general, he's screaming oh, okay. at me. I, he's I didn't screaming know you were at me. Start taking this personally, Chris. It, it, it's no. Nah, I it, look, <laughs> dude, dude screaming. Um, but no, he's it's. It's no, the same stuff. It just hang, hang, hang on, hang on. Fuck I'm hanging. That. Hang on, wait a second now. But hang on. Is that any different from this? That was a great song, and then you hear the number eleven one, and you're just like, "Oh, he's so angry!" Uh, what the hell? Okay, man? all right, all right. Well, <laughs> I love how you go back to the music. You've done this to me like two or three times, Radlich, where you're like, "You don't like this? Uh, I'll play it again, and I'll make you fucking listen <laughs> to it and show you I'm right." And the thing I, is, is that a lot of times you make... usually do. <laughs> open your heart, and I'll make you love me. Or uh, else you keep repeating things. <laughs> oh damn! No, okay. I see what you're. I see what you're saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. Maybe it's then. Maybe my problem is not with the vocals here. Maybe it's got to be something to do with the fact that they're not changing it up much in the background. That's that might be w- where my problem lies. The the fact that it's just and he's and it's almost. I don't want to say samey, but that's what it feels like to me. Um, I. I just not a fan of In the Name of a Solve, Mark. Sorry. Not making my playlist. I mean, that's fine. I'm not going to tease you about that. I just, I didn't see, there were subtle differences between track one and track 11 enough that I could say, hey, track 11 for me is preferable. And mm-hmm. I, I get if it's not, I mean, we've established on this show previously, we like a lot of the same stuff. We don't always have similar tastes. So, you know, what would you say? Okay, you if you compared, uh, uh, we would have to go into this a little bit more and actually listen to the full song. But I would love to be able to compare, like, you know, song six with song eleven. Because if I if I was to do a best of off of this, you know, what I'd love, uh, song six is making the the playlist easy, and this one's not going on there. And there's enough change up in six, I think. To where I don't get bored. Okay, I'm not at my computer right this second. Can you pull up the studio and play it? Yeah, I could try. If that is, <laughs> or, if you, I could, or if you suddenly try to do this, you're gonna bring the root down in your house. Let me look. Let me look and see what's going on here. I have to go over to open the link in the new tab. And okay, here it comes. Now I'm pausing it because right about there is where it gets real good. Now me hitting pause, it, 
it's not going to let me pick up where I left off. It's going to start the damn track over. So I'm not going to hit it. I'm not going to play it again. But right there, we just right before I hit pause is where I think that song gets awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. You don't get any of that in track 11 unless it's towards the end and I completely forgot about it. for another like 30 40 seconds and again um nothing changing up in that song so maybe uh, it, it's gotta vary it can't be just da, 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 over and over and over and over are, and are you song. are you one of those are you one of those jelly creatures from the herculoids what the hell was that <laughs> and My another best impression. herculoids reference here on the on the rattling <laughs> broadcasting network Ah, <laughs> uh, we bring it to you strong. <laughs> it's all <laughs> all the time. We get, we, oh, hold on, wait a second. Breaking news. Uh, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! That's the wrong one. It's a living, huh? <laughs> you know. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Yeah, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. One. There's your Herculoids. <laughs> Never gets old. Oh man. All right. So have we? Have we officially? Have we figured out where our where our differences lie? I think you're looking for a breakdown. That's what I think great. is happening here. I'm looking you're for like, a breakdown. Yeah, I'm glad yeah, I got a I think name you're for it for now. A breakdown. Or a fucking drum solo or something. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, you're wrong. I mean, this isn't like a Sugar Ray issue. where No, it's just wrong. Fly sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> every morning is the worst song ever written. I mean, it's every morning. Every morning <laughs> is literally the worst song in the history of music. It's even worse than this. Um, oh, no. Want to plunk a school? That's the my mama talk all the time. But to make me sick of the thing I gotta do, I can't begin to no kick. That's the follow stupid rule. Boy, to make me sick, just to make a lousy buck. Got to feel like a fool. That's right. Mama, you tell me, oh, what's the matter to you? Shut up for your face. That's my mama. Shut up for your face. <laughs> hey, shut up for your face. All right. We've been listening to this podcast going seriously, guys. What the fuck? Yeah, uh, you guys, you, you, you guys are just hanging on for that last song, song number twelve, coming up. <laughs> there we go. All right. Before we go off live recording time, this is track twelve. This is beneath the sleeves.
just because we're running out of time here. Uh, that was one of the longer tracks at five minutes and 14 seconds. Um, I thought it was good. It was a good, strong ending to the song, uh, to the album. Uh, I mean, overall, I, I think the album is good. Uh, I could see this getting some repeat play for at least a little while uh, on the old Spotify. Overall, I would give Darkest Hour the uh, – the fuck are they calling this thing again? Um, Godless Prophets and the Migrant Flora. I would give it a solid B+. Plus. Um, okay. It's competently recorded. Uh, I thought, you know, the, the songs were fun. Uh, the songs were heavy. The songs were aggressive. Um, I think what stops it from being an A for me is it's kind of like what you said. I wouldn't necessarily say it falls into the same Z range, but there's also not enough variation for it to, I mean, for, for, for me, an A is something where there's some interesting stuff going on and it's fun and it's aggressive. You know, it clicks all the boxes. This sort of missed the variance for me. Okay. I can see that. I really can. I give this a thumbs up easily. I think it's probably, I mean, we're, we're into March here, middle of March. It's probably one of the, it's, it's probably a top three albums we've done on the show so far this year. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say definitely give this a listen. If you have the opportunity, go onto YouTube, the, uh, the record label uh, Southern Lord. Boy, I had to look there for a second. forgot all about it. I, I was about to call it Ass Chapel Recordings. Um, <laughs> Southern Lord Recordings, they have uh, this whole album on YouTube for free. So by all means, give the whole thing a listen to. See if it's something you want to buy and support this band. I enjoyed it. I, I mistakenly said I thought that last song was the slowest of the album. Clearly I was wrong. Uh, it must, that, that intro must've, that intro must've threw me or something, but the, yeah, I definitely agree. I think this is something that I could find myself playing again throughout the year. Thumbs up for me. All right. Uh, next week we've got obituary self-titled obituary. And then finally, and I actually found out why this was delayed. So still Panther was supposed to come out a month ago. It got put off a month. And they only dropped a single instead because of the lead singer's battle with alcoholism. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we – Life imitates we art here. and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> so we here on the Metal Hammer of Doom hope the members of Steel Panther are healthy uh, and, and get back on the road to recovery and continue to put out the stellar performances that we've co- come to know and love from Steel Panther. I'm very excited about that in two weeks. But in the meantime, we've got a new obituary coming out. One of the kings of death metal, one of the godfathers. So it should be a fun show. Hopefully Coop can join us. Uh, I don't know where he, he ended up tonight. Because we, we set the show for 1030 to accommodate him. And, you know, I guess with his job, sometimes shit happens. So I'm it not going to beat him up too much about it. You know, whatever. What do, hey, just real quick, real quick. What do I have to look for with obituary? Because, again, Virgin Ear is going into that one. Uh, like I said, Obituary is one of the godfathers of death metal. Actually, I think they're from Tampa. Um, so here, I'm pulling them up on the wiki here. Wiki. So, give me some. Give me some. Give me an idea what the vocalization is like. Are we talking like? Yeah, it's Cookie Monster for the most part. Okay. Um, okay. Obituary band. God damn it. <laughs> wiki to big obituary. I, I like I, what I love doing <laughs> is asking Mark Radlich to give me an idea, and when I could have just Googled it myself instead of got him Googling <laughs> and, it and for I, me. I fucking Google it for <laughs> you. Um, well, I mean, here, here, this should give you an idea of what you're getting into here. Associated Act, Six Feet Under, Death, okay. Deicide, Massacre, Denial Fiend, Catastrophic, and Tardy Brothers. The fuck are the Tardy Brothers? Tardy Brothers. Um, Anyway, Obituary is an American death metal. You know what death metal sounds like. Death mm, metal never heard formed it. in October of 84. In, <laughs> shut up. In Tampa, <laughs> Florida, under the name Executioner, then changed the name spelling to Executioner with an X, before changing their name to Obituary in 1988. So, you know, it's, like I said, it's Cookie Monster vocals. Um, they they, have, they've been around for a while, though. They, they, yeah, since their, their first album here is Slowly We Rot from 1989. Uh, cause of death, it's the end complete, world demise, back from the dead, frozen in time, executioner's return, 
I mean, they, they've, they've put out some solid entries every few years here. Their last one, Inked in Blood, came out in 2014. Um, Blabbermouth gave it an 8 out of 10. So, okay. you know, like I said, they've been around. They're one of the, they're, they're, which was recorded at Redneck Studios. Hot damn. Um, <laughs> this new one, let's see, where did they record this one? This one's coming out on Relapse Records. Relapse definitely known for the death metal releases. Um, not a lot said about it on <laughs> on the wiki page. We'll know more next week. It's a short album. Um, the clock's in at about 33 minutes. Uh, most of the songs are under four minutes long, but they're all over a minute, so that's good. <laughs> this isn't uh, fucking Napalm Death. You suffer. Good night, everybody. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it'll be what it'll be. You know, with death metal, you definitely know what you're getting into, and there's, there's no two ways around that. All right. So, um, as far as our other plugs go, um, no themes this week. We're all over the place. Jesse, uh, Jesse, ha- Jesse got together with a bunch of comic book people uh, and did a show on Tuesday. Live. Robert and I. I don't want to, I mean, Robert and I talked a little bit about Kong Skull Island, but I mostly want to pitch Robert idea, Robert, my idea, our, our labor of love, our new project, the Herculoids versus Thundar the Barbarian. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Everyone tweet Robert Winfrey at Winfrey MMA uh, and tell him what a great job you think this is that we're going to be uh, putting this movie together. Uh, I'm going to start a Kickstarter for this. Oh, for the, Her- <laughs> for the Herculoids versus Sundar the Barbarian as part of my uh, Hanna Barbera verse. Two so weeks in, you got thirty grand. What? What the hell are you going to do if something like that actually took <laughs> off? Uh, you'd be like, oh, this was a fucking joke. Of course, I mean they paid what well, they paid somebody to do like five grand on how to make potato salad or something like that, didn't they? So you never know what you're going <laughs> to find out there. Well, considering I don't own any of the Hanna Barbera licenses, I'm, I suppose uh, who owns the Hanna Barbera license? That's a good question. Who Find out. Who owns the Hanna Barbera license? Google. I should get one of them like Alexa machines. Uh, uh, wouldn't Time Warner. Okay. The Warner Brothers. Oh, good. Oh, so that's DC. <laughs> Because I haven't trashed that company enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> hey, Bar- hey, Hannah Barbera, I'd like to produce a movie. <laughs> no, they need, hey, what you, you need to do, you, you need to play the, the role of Snagglepuss, all right? Because we all know how that's going to be portrayed in the comic. The Flintstones have got to be wrapped up in there somehow, and then you're you're trying to put this film together, and oh heavens, the Murgatroyd! I can't get any good actors. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I'm gonna have to change my name or have or hire somebody <laughs> to go in and pitch this idea for me, since I don't think Warner Brothers will ever talk to me. Considering <laughs> I spent <laughs> more are you than D. Mark Radlich? <laughs> Are you the Mark Rattlitz? <laughs> are, are you the one that says we can't find our asses from our elbows and that we completely <laughs> fuck the DC Cinematic Universe? Are you that guy? They, like, have You're a super the cut. They have, a, they have, like, a, a half-hour super cut of all the shit that you said ready to go. Yeah. Just so you, if you walk in the room, they're like, ah, oh, here, have a listen to this and tell me if you think you should be on our team here at Time Warner. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna lock me in the room with sev- with, with several angry gangbangers and turn the <laughs> lights out. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, that'll teach you to fucking tell us we don't know how to run a studio. Um, anyway, so yes, check out boy that that whole bit went sideways real quick. Um, they're all dressed. They're all actually- dressed like the Joker uh, from from uh, from Suicide Squad. Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we actually, I, what I'm trying to tell you people is that in the archives, uh, damn you Hollywood, Kong Skull Island, and yes, I did actually really, 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 really pitch the Herculoids versus Thundar the Barbarian, and Robert Winfrey threatened to kill me and it with fire. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow on On Trial, 
uh, Sean's pick, God bless him, he picked Zach and Miri make a porno, which I have to now finish watching as soon as I get done babbling here. And I, I will be on the defense. I will be for the defense. So Zach and Miri make a porno. Hot diggity. Uh, next week, we got a double dose of the Iron Fist. Devil's Grip the Iron Fist, baby. Um, it's an actual song by Propane, in case you want to use it. Um, sure. We've got the first part of our living weapon discussion, in which case we eviscerate the book. Myself, Jesse, and, <laughs> and, and uh, Ronnie Adams. Uh, we'll have our review of Beauty and the Beast, the live-action remake that I'm sure is going to be the first billion-dollar movie of the year. Uh, the aforementioned obituary, and then, like I said, our double t- our double the dose of the Iron Fist. Thursday, uh, we'll have a TV party tonight. Myself and co-producer of the Herculoids versus Thundar the Barbarian, Robert Winfrey, will be uh, up for the review. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's a lot of plugs there. And, and do me a favor. If you've enjoyed the nonsense that you've heard tonight, give us a uh, – subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave a comment. Leave us a review. Uh, everyone begs for a four or five star review. I'm begging for a one star review. Tell us to go fuck ourselves, but put a review in there. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something. One star. One star that says, for the love of God, just stick to the music and stop babbling, you asshole. <laughs> I've learned nothing. That's what it would say. One star. <laughs> I've learned nothing. <laughs> this is this is two hours of my life I want back. <laughs> <laughs> we, encourage, we encourage those kinds of reviews. All right, Jesse, Indeed. do your thing. All right, folks, go give the Rattletch and Broadcasting Facebook page a like. You can stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. Also, uh, Mark mentioned uh, we'll be dropping the Iron Fist uh, Hug You Hardcore. Oh, no, I saying Living Weapon. Uh, we'll be dropping that here within a couple weeks. If you guys want, every once in a while when I'm editing an episode, you can stay up on top of some funny stuff as I come across it uh, on my source material Facebook page. Give that a like as well. I'll be usually sharing uh, some, you know, just some some quips and the fun stuff that we learned through the episode. So other than that, I think that's really all I have. You know, just go back, check out the archives, listen to all the great podcasts we have here on the network. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on TuneIn Radio. Thanks, everybody, for listening tonight. Appreciate every single one of you. Mark Radulich, take us out of here. All right. For the uh, absence of the party, Metal Coop, Robert Cooper. For the always to the party, Mr. Wheezy himself. This is Jesse Stryker. I am your host. The man is a reporter. And frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radulich. I'm on the wrong outro music. Be well, be safe, and behave. <laughs> knows that by the foot there's no better ride than an old station wagon room for six people facing forward two people facing backward and a whole lot of luggage lumber and bicycles haphazardly strapped to the roof if you can parallel park that beast you can park anything and with some quality parts and a little napa know-how you can keep your land ship running longer stronger it's not obsolete it's a rare treasure that's napa know-how napa know-how